full meta jackrick opens on what appears to be a previously on segment, which is itself a meta commentary on the show's refusal to embrace continuity in an era of serialized television. The sequence starts out with clips from earlier in the season, but becomes progressively weirder until it reaches total surrealism. Rick asks Morty to marry him, and at their vows suggests a sealed chamber as a honeymoon destination. Later, Rick and Morty are under the influence of an alien named Previous Leon, a giant green mosquito-esque creature with the power to affect narrative structure. Inside the sealed chamber, Rick instructs Morty to continue repeating, next time on Rick and Morty, the phrase counteracts Previous Leon's powers, making him visible. When Rick and Morty fight him, he drags them through the title sequence of the show which is a fun touch that they get electrocuted by the title card before dropping back into the garage. In the garage, Morty starts to have an understandable freakout. Previous Leon escapes through a portal that Rick describes as a hole in the fourth wall that leads to the metanarrative layer. The two go in search of Previous Leon in the metanarrative layer, which is depicted as a landscape with paths to different story archetypes and tropes. Rick remarks that the entire premise is a bunch of groan-inducing wordplay for seven TV critics that won't even enjoy it. Rick and Morty find previous Leon hiding literally in the weeds. The branches even spell out, weeds. After chasing previous Leon into a ravine, he starts praying another callback to Never Rickying Morty, in which prayer and religious themes are used to stall out the narrative. Suddenly, Jesus Christ arrives, with Story Lord returning as well. The Never Rickying Morty took place inside a toy train sold as a piece of Rick and Morty merchandise. But Rick has no recollection of either Jesus or Story Lord. However Morty has played with the toy train and recognizes them as characters from it. Story Lord explains that he used the Bible story he was locked in at the end of that episode to transcend reality and enter the metanarrative layer. Jesus tears out previous Leon's wings, then beats the crap out of Rick and Morty, ending with what Rick calls, the bane. As Jesus drops slams Rick onto his knee, shattering Rick's spine, before Jesus can finish the job, he's attacked by previous Leon, who invents a new backstory for Jesus in which he dies of old age. This causes the real Jesus to age and die too. Meanwhile, Story Lord declares that his character's motivation is finding a motivation, so he goes in search of the writer who created the story train from Never Rickying Morty. In a dilapidated toy shop, he finds that the writer is a blue alien who looks suspiciously like Rick and Morty. He even has Harmon's infamous story circle drawn on a whiteboard in his workspace. The writer explains that Story Lord is such a thin character, because the Ricks who employed him to write the story for the story train pitched him half-baked ideas and then lost interest in the project. Story Lord begs the writer to give him a motivation, and the writer curtly tells him that his motivation is wanting to find motivation. Unsatisfied, Story Lord kidnaps the writer. Meanwhile, Rick and Morty bring a captive previous Leon to the fortress of a group called the Self-Referential Six, a group of beings with the power to affect narrative structures. One of them creates plot twists, another flashbacks, and a third continuity errors. After fighting off the Six, Rick locates his target, a prisoner called Brett Kahn with the power to retroactively change narratives. The Six are keeping him in a prison made of sports, which Rick notes is the opposite of story. When Morty points out that, retcon, would also work. Retcon demonstrates his power by retroactively making it so that his name has always been retcon. Rick asks retcon to retcon him from ever having come to the fortress in exchange for his release. But Rick is forced to release him nonetheless when the self-referential six show up. And Ret retcons the fortress into an enormous orange. We pick back up with Rick and Morty trudging through a snowy wasteland, freezing to death because they've been past the fourth wall for too long. As the last of their strength leaks away, they're rescued by a hooded figure. When they wake up, they find themselves in the company of Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell was a literary scholar most notable for his books, The Hero's Journey, and The Hero with a Thousand Faces, wherein he established a theory that all stories follow the same basic structure. Campbell asks Rick and Morty to name one good story that doesn't involve an old man with soup, which they immediately do. Campbell explains to Rick and Morty that all characters are meta, all nourished and consumed by chaos. He gives them a map to a region rich in narrative ore. In montage, Rick and Morty build a machine to bring them back into their main reality, all of which is revealed to have been a previously on from previous Leon. When they enter the portal, they're dumped back through the title card. 
Meanwhile, Story Lord forces the writer he kidnapped to build a machine that sucks the motivation from everyone in the universe. As the motivation flows from people across the galaxy into Story Lord, Rick and Morty show up to stop him. Rick fights Story Lord, but his newfound motivation makes him nearly invincible, so it's up to Morty to stop the writer from operating his machine. The ghost of Joseph Campbell appears, instructing Morty to tell the writer that he's only proud of his creation's success because he wants to be creative. But that creation has turned him into a villain. To be heroic, he must stop creating. Campbell's speech convinces the writer to stop cranking the machine, and Story Lord loses his motivation, allowing Rick to defeat him. Morty tells the writer that Joseph Campbell wants him to kill Story Lord, and the writer complies, suffocating Story Lord with a Rick plushie toy. Morty burns the story machine, and the writer returns to his sad office, where he has a new idea for a movie. Campbell's ghost tries to stop him from writing it, but the writer can't see him. And this brings the episode to an end. Comment for episode 8. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. Until next time, take care.